Okay, the last step in building the effector is to add the uh, tie rods, I guess is what I'm going to call them, to the, to the effector. And they're going to go on either side of this little construction right here. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the linear plus version, uh, which means it has a little bit larger build area. And in order to increase the size of the build area, they've actually had to extend the width of the effector right here. So they provide some little brass spacers that fit in here. The instructions point out that brass spacers uh, and the illustration shows them facing uh, so that the uh, flange end of the spacer is actually toward this housing here, or this uh, uh, main frame here, and the uh, thinner end of the spacer is out here. Where are those spacers? These are the spacers right here. They call them copper spacers in the instructions, but they, they look like brass to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get those out. Okay, so this bolt right here is a M3 by 20 millimeter, and then the little copper spacer is going to go on here, and the notice that the washer end of the copper spacer is uh, facing outward, and the narrow end of the copper spacer is toward the rod end. I think these uh, little rod links are actually made for uh, radio control cars. Um, I guess I've seen them on, air on model airplanes as well. Um, I noticed that these, this particular set of carbon fiber tubes are not quite as well made as the last set I've got. Uh, they're threaded into the carbon fiber and then they've been treated with epoxy. I did measure them. I was a little worried because I saw this extra thread right here and I thought, boy, it wouldn't be good if these weren't all the same length. But I did, I did line them up and uh, I assume that what they must do is they must stick these rod ends on some kind of a jig to make sure that every single one is exactly the same length. Um, anyway, they are all they are all really close. They're they're within one or two thousandths of each other in length. So um, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Uh, so this goes on here, and then it's going to thread into the. Uh, there's a threaded uh, threaded hole in the side of the effector here. So this is just going to thread in here like so. And I'm not going to thread all this in when you watch it, but. Um, I'm going to put this on here. There's a little bit of play here. I wish that these screws actually had a smooth shank right here to go against the end of the rod end because I think over time this is going to start to wear. As the machine is working there actually is a little bit of play and I don't know if you can see that but it's actually free to wiggle a bit. When you tighten it all the way down it's fine but I have noticed on the other machine that this screw does have a tendency to work loose and I have ended up tightening it up a few times. So what I'm going to do on this machine is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lo blue Loctite on this thread in all six locations so that, so that it doesn't come out. The other end of the rod is actually going to connect to the slide block um, or the slide guide. And that's actually made out of, I think it's made out of ABS or maybe it's glass filled nylon. Um, and those those have not come loose so i i don't actually know i've never tried to put loctite on any kind of plastic or nylon and i don't know that it would damage it or not but it seems to be a fairly tight fit and it doesn't seem to be vibrating loose so i'm only going to put loctite on this end so i'm going to do that off camera you don't need to see all that i just very quickly wanted to show all six rod ends put together and ready to install on the end of the effector and notice that the washer end or flange end of the ferrule is uh, toward the open end of the bolt. Um, I think I may have shown in the previous scene, I've shown it backwards, and uh, I, I am nowhere near sufficiently adept at, vid at video editing that I'm going to be able to go back in and, and change this. So um, I'm going to figure that out another day. Anyway, this is the way they're supposed to go, and then I'll just put a little bit of blue Loctite on the end of each one of these before I thread them into the effector here, 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 and here. Back in a minute. Okay, here I've got the tie rods actually attached to the effector here. Uh, and as I said, I put a little Loctite on each of these uh, machine screws before I 
screwed them in there. You want to get these pretty, snide, pretty snug, but you don't want to get so tight that you actually crush these little spacers down. Um, and, and I think they will deform a little bit, so that's maybe why uh, on the other machine they keep coming apart. I'm going to take the other machine apart here in a week or two and, uh, and Loctite those down as well. Uh, be careful that you don't get any Loctite into the ball joints, obviously. That would kind of mess them up. I live at 8,000 feet. Everything I buy has been packaged at sea level, so when I opened up the Loctite, I naturally it all blew out because of the change in pressure, and I blasted Loctite all over myself and all over my work surface here, but oh well. All right, moving on. Okay, this is the completed effector assembly with the uh, rods installed and I'm ready to put that aside and go back to building the rest of the frame. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, slide guides on and I'm building the linear the linear slide version of the printer which I think is is going to be more accurate and more precise and also last longer. Of course I say I want it to last long but <laughs> the reality of these machines is that they're, they're going to become obsolete pretty quickly. 3D printing is changing really fast. Uh, first 3D printer I had cost me $1,500, and, and that was only a, about 14 months ago. Um, and uh, this, this machine is only 300 well, this was $339. Um, I think it's selling now for about $350 right now. Um, but that's with the added heat bed that I don't have. Anyway, uh, I'm sure that a year from now I'll be looking at, at something else. I'll be looking at some kind of uh, laser, centered laser um, product or something like that. But uh, for, for what my students need to do in a, in a middle school classroom, uh, this machine ought to last us two or three years. And, and if it's assembled properly, uh, it won't be a mechanical reason that we stop using it. It'll be because there are there are better options in the 3D printing world. Okay, what I'm going to do at this point is uh, begin to um, install the uh, aluminum extrusions. This is 2020 aluminum extrusion. Is it coming into focus? Not really. Anyway, you can see it's got a kind of an X cross section here, and it's going to slide into the ends here. Come on. Focus, please. I'm going to start to sound like a Canadian guy. What's his name? Arduino versus evil. Anyway, um, it's going to slide down in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of turn the, turn the insertion screws so they're vertical. Um, if you've put this together upside down, these are, this is only going to go in one way. And... When it goes all the way down, it actually hits. Uh, there's a little stop here. See that? There's a little stop. Wow, focus is terrible. Why am I not focusing? I don't know why it wasn't focusing. It's a lot better focus. Um, so the extrusion slides in here and then it's going to hit a stop. When it hits that stop, um, that's as far as it's going to go. So you want to go right down to that stop and then this is a good place where you can actually see the action of these insert nuts. Notice that it's going to look right here at this point and when I tighten the screw you can see that, that insertion nut turns sideways and then you can see how it clamps against the inside of the extrusion there and that's why I use these instead of the uh, square nuts that are supplied with the, um, with the manufacturer's version here. And we'll do the same thing on the upper one. You can't actually see that. I've got everything kind of fouled on the tripod here so that you can actually see it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, two more times and that's how those vertical support rods go in. Okay, I was having a little focus problem when I did this on the last one so now I've got the, I don't know what was going on with the focus but um, so I just wanted to show how this goes together again. Looks like we got that one just a little bit too tight. 
I'm going to turn the screws so that these are vertical so that everything will slide in easily and then this just drops right in here and you have to wiggle it around a little bit but um, it should come on it's being stubborn why it's not dropping in so this is the second time I've tried to shoot this and it's not not working any better Let's see if I can maybe push that out of the way maybe it's just bottoming on the come on looks like I might have a bad nut there there we go that's in did it go all the way down to the bottom not quite you have to fuss with it a little bit but it'll go I can kind of feel it from the bottom there. There we go. Slides in. All right. All right. As much as I'd like to get this finished, I'm going to take a pause here. The reason being that it's in time time to install the linear slides, uh, which are these guys right here. Um, the reason I'm going to pause now is that the linear slides need to be installed with M3 screws. Um, I'm not going to open this up right now. I'll open it up on the next. Uh, when I get the parts. They need to be installed with M3 screws and the uh, nuts that the manufacturer provides here uh, for that are these uh, these um, M3 nuts here in this package and I really want to put this in I really want to put these in with insertion nuts instead. One of the problems that I had with the other machine was making sure that the slides were installed and ended up exactly centered on this track. It's very easy to end up with the track a little bit crooked or offset to one side or another. And I think that impacts the accuracy of the printing on this. So the insert nuts will actually center the screws uh, exactly in the center of the channel. And that will force the linear slides to also remain exactly centered in the channel. And I think that will cure some of the uh, some of the accuracy problems that I'm having with the other machine. So I've gone ahead and ordered those um, from Amazon, and I think they're going to probably take a a couple of days to get here. Estimated estimated arrival was Wednesday or Thursday. So uh, we're going to call this series of videos good, and I guess I'm going to sit down and learn a little bit more about how to edit video.